Welcome to Optimal Anesthesia, where we delve into the fascinating history of anesthesia and its impact on medicine. Today, we're taking a journey back to the 1950s, a decade of innovation and transformation in the field of anesthesia. Join us as we explore the key events and developments that shape anesthesia practice during this pivotal period. In the 1950s, the landscape of pain management transformed. While the allure of new general anesthesia drugs grew, visionaries like John Bonica and Daniel Moore championed the significance of regional anesthesia, especially in pain control. Bonica, a trailblazer in the field, pioneered the concept of pain clinics, dedicated to managing chronic pain through innovative techniques like regional anesthesia. Meanwhile, in veterinary medicine, Barbara Weaver and Leslie Hall made history as the first veterinarians to practice anesthesia exclusively. Drawing from human anesthesia methods, they tailored techniques to suit the needs of their animal patients, highlighting the importance of specialized anesthesia care in veterinary practice. The 1950s also marked a breakthrough in managing postoperative nausea and vomiting (PONV). The discovery of the antihistamine Dramamine, initially used for motion sickness, was repurposed to manage PONV effectively. This development significantly improved postoperative care, ensuring a smoother recovery for patients. In 1951, the world of anesthesia welcomed a game-changer, succinylcholine. This new muscle relaxant boasted a rapid onset in short duration of action, making it perfect for procedures like tracheal intubation that required brief muscle relaxation. Succinylcholine revolutionized anesthesia, offering an effective solution for achieving muscle relaxation quickly and safely. Alongside these medical advancements, ethical considerations and research were gaining traction. Henry Beecher, a leading figure in anesthesiology, advocated for the use of placebos in human trials and stressed the importance of informed consent for all research participants. His efforts laid the groundwork for modern standards of research ethics, ensuring the protection of human subjects in medical research. In 1953, Virginia Apgar, an extraordinary anesthesiologist, introduced the Apgar score, a revolutionary method for assessing the health of newborns right after birth. This scoring system, based on five criteria including heart rate and reflexes, quickly became a standard practice in neonatal care. The APGAR score provided crucial insights into a newborn's condition, guiding medical interventions and improving outcomes for infants around the world. Meanwhile, concerns about the safety of regional anesthesia, especially when used in the spinal canal, were addressed by a landmark study conducted by Drips and Van Dam. Their study, which included over 10,000 patients who received spinal anesthesia with tetracaine, found no severe neurological issues. This research provided critical reassurance about the safety and effectiveness of regional anesthesia techniques, paving the way for their widespread use in medical practice. In 1954, a remarkable invention transformed from a tool of war to a beacon of peace in medical practice. The infrared analyzer, originally designed for military use during World War II, found a new purpose in the early 1950s in medicine. This device, capable of measuring carbon dioxide levels in exhaled breath, became an indispensable asset in anesthesia. Its ability to monitor respiratory function with precision revolutionized surgical procedures, ensuring patients' safety and well-being. Around the same time, a new local anesthetic, chloroprocaine, emerged onto the clinical scene. Despite initial doubts due to its ester-linked structure, chloroprocaine offered a host of advantages. Its rapid degradation by plasma cholinesterase made it ideal for short procedures where quick onset and offset of anesthesia were crucial. This development marked a significant advancement in anesthesia, providing an effective and reliable option for various surgical interventions. As we move into 1955, the World Federation of Societies of Anesthesiologists, WFSA, 
was established, uniting anesthesiologists worldwide. This landmark event brought together experts from across the globe, fostering collaboration and driving advancements in the specialty. The formation of WFSA was a pivotal moment, elevating the status of anesthesiology to a distinct medical specialty on the global stage. In 1956, a groundbreaking study by Lassen et al. shed light on the potential dangers of prolonged nitrous oxide inhalation. The study revealed that nitrous oxide could lead to severe bone marrow depression and even death, highlighting the importance of cautious use of this common anesthetic agent in clinical practice. This discovery prompted a re-evaluation of nitrous oxide use, particularly in patients at risk for complications, and emphasized the need for careful monitoring and management of anesthesia. Also in 1956, a new term emerged in the field of anesthesia, Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist, or CRNA. This term reflected the growing recognition of nurses as valuable members of the anesthesia team. CRNAs underwent a year of specialized training in nurse anesthesia, highlighting their expanding role in providing safe and effective anesthesia care. The introduction of CRNAs marked a significant step forward in the advancement of anesthesia practice, demonstrating the importance of collaboration among healthcare professionals in delivering high-quality patient care. In 1959, the landscape of anesthesia practice was forever changed with the advent of modern outpatient anesthesia. Canadian anesthetists Eric Webb and Horace Graves reported their groundbreaking experience with outpatient anesthesia, ushering in a new era of surgical care. Their pioneering work demonstrated the feasibility and safety of outpatient surgery, paving the way for the widespread adoption of outpatient procedures in the years to come. Also in 1959, a revolutionary teaching tool emerged in the form of Resusian. Developed by Asman Lertel, Resusian was a lifelike mannequin used to train healthcare providers in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR. This innovative simulator provided a realistic and immersive learning experience, allowing medical professionals to practice CPR techniques in a controlled environment. Resusian transformed CPR training ensuring that healthcare providers were well-equipped to save lives in emergency situations. As we reflect on these remarkable advancements in anesthesia, we're reminded of the tireless dedication and ingenuity of the pioneers in our field. Join us next time as we continue to explore the rich history of anesthesia and uncover the stories behind its evolution. Thanks for tuning in to Optimal Anesthesia.